Hello there. Today's video is one that I've been waiting quite a while to do. Okay, quite a while because I haven't been online. That's one thing. But also quite a while because some people asked me to do this maybe a month ago. So for those who asked me, my apologies for the delay. But here it is: three paths to confidence in sales. Three paths to sales confidence. Right. Three things you can do to get more confidence in your sales. That's what I'm really on about. Now, one of the keys of any success, of course, is confidence. And some people truly believe that successful salespeople are born. I mean, they're just born with it. I mean, that's a lot of bunkum. That truly is a lot of rubbish, to be quite frank with you. you it, sales is a skill you have to learn like everything else. Now, if you're an extrovert in the past, you will probably be perceived to be a better potential salesperson because the traditional sales approaches were talkers, right? Chat, 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 chat. And extroverts love to talk. Whereas introverts, they don't like to talk. They might rather listen, all right? But in today's society, when we are so connected everywhere, I can tell you that by far the most effective and the most successful and the most profitable salespeople are those who can listen, not talk. And introverts, this is your chance. If you feel that you would like to have a go at sales and you feel like in the past you haven't been able to do it because you feel introverted, you don't like talking to people, let me tell you, if you can get hold of this, you could make a fortune. Because if you're a great listener and you are prepared to help and serve people, then you have got it made because that's what sales is all about these days. All right, truly important. So I'm gonna share with you three ways that you can build your confidence, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, doesn't really matter, okay? And I'm hoping at the end of this video, you've got some value from it. If you do, leave me a like, leave me a comment, do give it a share if you want all those things. And it's great to be back online. I mean, it's been a long time offline. Okay, my name is Peter Beckett, I'm the Village Marketer, and as always talking to you, from my little Thai village way up near the Cambodian border. Let me say a few acknowledgements. Let me say hello to Sanjay. Good to see you. Thank you, mate. Ed Kerwin. Wow, good to see you, mate. Thanks for joining me. Celia, thank you. Josh Stania, good to see you, Josh. Hello to you as well. Okay. Is there any who else have we got? Oh, I've, I've gone through. I'll come back to you. Okay. First one. Thanks for the loves and lot. Yvonne, thank you for joining. I didn't see you. Thank you very much indeed. All right. Right, most sales training will tell you this, that in order to build your confidence, you need to, I mean, record your, record your successes. You need to start each day congratulating and thanking people. You need to, to only associate with positive people. You need to, um, to, to become a subject matter expert. You need to, to see yourself as, as confident, even though you don't feel confident. I mean, some of those aspects are true but they're missing the point, okay? The real issue are these things. First, know your why. What is it that gets you out of bed in the morning? What is it that drives you? What is it that's going to make you pick up the phone next time and talk? What is it that's gonna make you give the best presentation you can? What is it that actually makes you actually have the appointment with that prospect from heck you've been putting off for a long time? What is it that you're going to take on that potential fear of rejection? It's your why. It is your why. All the other things don't count unless your why is in there because your why is the thing that's going to get you through these tough times. You've heard it before, but if you don't pay attention to it, it's true. If you are simply running a business to make money and that's it, that is not a good enough why. You truly need to dig down deep inside you and find out what it is that really drives you, what, are, what you really want to achieve and why you want to achieve it. Only then will you have the intestinal fortitude and the resilience and the persistence and the confidence, right, to be good in sales. Without the why, you've got nothing. Second, stop waiting for the perfect moment. I was talking to someone today, no names, no pack drill, right? I was talking to someone today, uh, 
now they're not on there thank goodness sake. and and really i was saying to me look Peter, look um i'm ready to go but not quite i said what do you mean you're ready to go but not quite well because i i'm just not i'm not really together with my sales presentation yet okay so we talked about that so we sorted that out yeah but Peter, I, i'm not really ready with with my with my uh, phone skills i said we've been through all this before the bottom line is this people some people maybe it's you i don't know are waiting for the perfect moment when you've got everything lined up your presentation's done you've got your scripts all worked out you've got you know what you're going to say you know how you're going to handle all the difficult questions you know all this stuff right i can tell you that's never going to happen there never will be a perfect moment you never will give a perfect presentation you never will have a perfect conversation you will make mistakes you will doesn't matter for goodness sake all i'm saying is get on with it put yourself out there right put yourself out there be the imperfect authentic self that you are let me tell you this that if you put yourself out there and stop waiting for the perfect moment you may be pleasantly surprised that people will accept you for exactly who in the heck you are you are real you are honest you are getting to the truth with people and you are truly in a situation when people can relate to you all right even if inside you're thinking oh i don't have the confidence right but if you are being honest and truthful and transparent with them and say to these things to them, people will accept you and people will resonate with you and when they resonate with you they'll open up to you when they open up to you goodness me then you've got a perfect situation to be a great salesperson that's really what it is okay number three this is the elephant in the room okay i know the elephant in the room when it comes to confidence in sales okay i want you no need to hold you in suspense because you know what it is it's the fear right the fear of rejection okay and the fear of getting objections of how to handle objections that's the thing that puts most people off that's the thing that probably stops some people from even becoming involved in sales in the first place okay the fear of how to handle an objection or getting rejected this is my suggestion for you for what it's worth you may not accept it but for what it's worth i would say to you this stop hanging around and waiting for an objection to come instead encourage them get them out in the open get them out in the open in really get people to share with you what it is okay What's stopping them, whatever it might be? I mean, here's some questions you can ask. One I'd say, and by the way, as long as you're crystal clear, right, in your why of why you're doing this and you've got the intestinal fortitude, if you're crystal clear in your why, this, you can do this. So what I'd be saying to you is this. Here's a question you could say to them. Um, something like, do you have any questions about my particular solution? or even a bit stronger go another step is there anything that's preventing you from making a decision to work with me today okay and wait for an answer this is where we keep quiet right is there anything that's stopping you from making a decision to work with me today from accepting your solution from accepting your offer your product your service whatever it might be right is there anything and if there is they will bring it out and when they bring the objections out you welcome them and you do not try to answer the question the objection right if you try to argue with the objection i can tell you all the rapport and confidence you've got has <coughs> gone out the window what you do is you use these objections and you ask questions to find out more about why they are saying that thing in other words you're getting to understand them more and more of a sudden they will realize that you're on the same team as them you're not trying to push them at all you're simply trying to get them to to share with you why that objection they've got is real if it's real okay that's the key thing so by asking questions every time what you're simply doing is you're acknowledging them you're accepting the fact that they're not happy about a certain thing they're unsure they're uncertain whatever it may be and by asking them tell me why okay 
that you what you're doing is getting them to share more with you about the reasons for the objection once you do that and you get them talking about it and you can simply say things like to me what what brought you to that sort of a uh, solution what brought you to that sort of conclusion should i say and why do you think like that can you tell me more i need to understand because i want to truly understand you because if i don't understand you then i can't give you the best solution anyway and if you aren't clear you're never going to make a decision and if you don't make a decision then this problem you've got is going to stay there forever right so with the objection you just gave me whatever it is x y and z no need no money no time whatever it may be right tell me more about that what makes you think that way let me see if i can help you work it out that's really what you need to do okay truly that's important they're the three things they're the three things that will give you confidence because once a person starts really sharing with you the reasons why they have an objection all of a sudden they start to think oh i'm not sure whether that's really what i think at all right maybe that's maybe that's not try and you'll just you'll they often the objections are excuses not to make a decision you know that anyway right so you just do that in the nicest way possible there you are there's some thoughts for the day all right now if you want to know more by the way i'll just skimmed over the top obviously for those who've been in sales you know exactly what i'm saying but if you need to know more details behind that fine here's my call to action send me a personal message and i will send you okay some information about how to transform objections into opportunities okay not on this particular video otherwise I mean, because it'd take me 30 minutes at least to do it all right thank you very much for sharing your time sanjay ed and and celio and josh and oh and steve and yvonne oh, oh sorry i missed all you thank you very much for sharing me i hope you got some value from it and now don't, don't forget confidence you're not born with it you're not born with sales skills either you can learn to do that if you remember three things you don't have to sell people, you serve them, right? Secondly, you don't have to convince people, you support and guide them, okay? And thirdly, you don't have to talk, you have to listen. Think of those things. If you can do those things, then sales success will be assured for you. There you go. Happy found it helpful. Oh, one last call to action. If you want to join my Facebook group, come and see me, okay? Your Next Level. It's on Facebook, just look for it, Your Next Level and answer the three questions, okay? And I'll welcome you to the group. Okay, all the best, talk, talk to you tomorrow. Bye for now.